Hello there, fellow zombie slayers! My name is Stanley557, and today we'll be looking at how to do the Voyage of Despair Easter Egg. Let's begin. Step 1. The Sentinel Artifact is yours for the taking. To complete this step, you simply need to get to the other side of the ship and claim the Sentinel Artifact. Step 2. For the elements are four, and must be attuned. To open up the Pack-a-Punch, you need to interact with four pedestals around the map, one in the back of the boiler room, one in the back of the cargo hold, one at the bottom of the grand staircase, and the final one on the poop deck. Once all four have been interacted with, the Pack-a-Punch will spawn in the last pedestal that has been activated. Step number three. To change the Agents of Change is to change everything. Now this is probably the most complicated step of the Easter Egg. In this step, you are interacting with dials on different sides of the ship to match them up with times on the clock. This step will require the player to run around the map and look at certain areas to see if there is a symbol. If there is a symbol, you need to look at the corresponding clock and write down the time it shows. If there isn't a symbol there, then you don't need to write down anything at all at that location. There are a total of six different symbol locations, and only four of them will have a symbol. Now that's out of the way, let's go over the locations. Here are all the clock locations. The first one is inside of the mail room under the stair of the steps. The corresponding clock is over here above the table. The second one is under the captain's desk in the bridge and the corresponding clock will be above the steering wheel. The third location will be in the grand staircase, the symbol will be above the door, and the corresponding clock is right here on the back wall. The fourth location is in the first class lounge here in the zombie spawn under the second candlelight, and the corresponding clock will be right here above the fireplace. Be careful as the time might be hard to read. The fifth location will be in the kitchen just right off of the dining hall on this cabinet door, and the corresponding clock will be right back here on the wall. The sixth and final location is in the stairway to the way of the boiler room. It will be hidden behind these crates, and the corresponding clock is in the back wall next to the zombie spawns. Now let me explain how to read each clock. For example, we see this symbol in the captain's room under the desk. I write down what symbol it is, and then walk over to the corresponding clock. The hour hand is on 7, and the minute hand is on the 8, so the time I would write down is 7.40. Now here's another example, and here's how to look at clocks that have both the hour and minute hand on the same place. In the mail room, I see this symbol under the stairs on the back wall. I walk over to the clock and see that both the minute and hour hand are on 2. This means that the time I would write down is 2.10. Once you have all four symbols, you can head over to the bridge and look at each of these speed dials. Each one corresponds to a different symbol. For example, the symbol I found in the mail room is the up triangle with a line through it. The time was 2.10. Each of the dials in the room corresponds to the minute hand on the clocks, and every time I move a dial up or down, it corresponds to 5 minutes. So I would move this dial down two times to symbolize the number 10 and then repeat for each symbol. Once all four minute hands have been entered in, you need to head the back of the ship on the poop deck, where the Sentinel artifact was first claimed. You'll see two more dials that can be interacted with. Both correspond to the hour hands. The one on the left is for the up triangle with a line through it, and the one on the right is for the down triangle with a line through it. Now we have found both the hour and minute hand for the up triangle with a line through it, which was the 2, so we move the dial down 2 times to the right to symbolize that. The time on the dial is now 2.10. The other dials can be found in the boiler room when coming down the stairs from the perk machine. The one on the left corresponds for the up triangle, and the one on the right corresponded for the down triangle. Once all four symbols have been entered in, you'll hear this sound cue meaning you've completed the step. Step 4. Within the chain of phases, all is conceived. In this step, we need to fill up four electrical outlets with the essence of different elemental zombies. An electrical outlet that can be filled will be indicated by this sound cue. There are six outlets in total, and only four can be filled. Location 1 is in the staterooms at the front of the ship. Location 2 is in the grand staircase to the left of the stairway. Location 3 is in the first class lounge next to the Zeus perk machine. Location 4 is in the left side of the dining hall next to this destroyed table. A good indicator is by looking at the sentinel artifact symbol on the side of the wall. Location 5 is on the aft deck behind the zombie spawn under the generator. Finally, the sixth location is in the third class berths right on the left as you come down the staircase. 
For example, right here we have the water outlet and the grand staircase. This can only be filled up by killing a water zombie nearby it, and once we do this, a sigil will appear on the ground. Keep in mind, you can only fill up one outlet per round. Once all four have been filled, we can move on to part two of this step. You can activate these circles at any point, but it will be a waste of time and ammo. The circles must be activated in a specific order, poison, water, electric, and fire. So make sure you write down which outlet is filled by a specific zombie type and its location. Make sure every player is standing on the sigil, and by holding the interaction button, every player will be teleported to fight an elemental challenge, filling the sentinel artifact. The first sigil is poison, and when activated, every player will be teleported and locked at the back of the poop deck, fighting poison zombies and blight fathers. Once enough have been killed, the challenge will end and you can pick up the sentinel artifact to move on to the next circle. If you have the Kraken, then make sure you pick up the Heart of Decay during this step. It will be needed for the next step in the Easter Egg. The second sigil that needs to be activated is the Water Sigil. The Water Challenge will lock every player in the bottom of the Cargo Hold to fight Water Zombies and Blight Fathers. Make sure you grab the Sentinel Artifact. The third sigil is in the Electric Challenge. Everyone will be locked on the mid-deck with Electric Zombies and Blight Fathers. Don't forget to grab the Sentinel Artifact. The fourth and final sigil is the Fire Sigil. This step has a tendency to glitch out, as in this gameplay I'm showing you, and not teleport the player to the boiler room. If it does, the simplest thing to do is to end the game and try again. The fire challenge requires that players fill a sentinel artifact with fire zombies and stokers. Once completed, you can grab the sentinel artifact and the step will be done. Step 5. Before the flame, your hubris is devoured. Now that the sentinel artifact has been reacquired, we can pack a punch it. To do this, we simply need an elementally imbued Kraken with the poison attribute. Once imbued with the poison's power, you will need to head to the bottom of the ship in the boiler room and begin shooting these pipes. There are 9 in total in this room. You'll know you've hit the pipe when you see the red hit marker symbol appear in your crosshairs and if you see both water and air being pumped out of the pipes. Here I will simply show you all 9 locations. Once all 9 pipes have been shot, you need to wait till the boiler room fills back up with water. If the pack punch is already down there, then great, you can pack punch set an artifact. If it isn't, then kill the last zombie, and on the next round, you'll see it spawn in the boiler room. When you're done, make sure you pack punch set an artifact, and the step will be done. Step 6. When the planets are revealed, the essence is received. Now this step can get complicated, so stay with me. We first need to interact with 9 symbols that have been burned into different areas around the map. These can be activated in any order, but this is an easy order from the front to the back of the ship. Head back to spawn and interact with this symbol to activate the sun, then run down to the mail room and interact with this symbol on the wall to activate Mercury. Head up to the bridge and in the captain's room, look behind this cabinet and you'll see the symbol for Saturn. In the stateroom bathrooms, you'll find Uranus hiding behind this tree, and then run into the grand staircase and you'll see the symbol for Venus hiding underneath the distressor. Running up the stairs close to the dining hall, you'll find the symbol for the moon. Sprint up to the aft deck, and you'll find the symbol for Neptune, hiding in the life preserver. Finally, head into the boiler room, and you'll find Jupiter in front of the Odin statue, and Mars in the back hiding down here in the pipes. Once all nine have been activated, you can head back into the cargo hold, and you'll see this planetary model of the solar system. Make sure the water is drained. Now you can interact with the solar system to begin collecting the essence of each of the celestial bodies. Once activated, an infinite number of zombies will spawn. The planetary model will flash different planets in a specific order. Make sure you write down the order of the planets that you see the planets appear in. For example, I label the Sun as 1, Mercury as 2, and Venus as 3, and so on. Then when the model begins to flash the planets, I simply write down what the number is. Here is a quick visual guide so you can check the planets as you watch the model. The Sun will always be last. You can check the order at any point unless you failed that for that round. 
And if you fail, you must wait until the next round to try again. Now what you have to do is look up into the sky and shoot a planet. My first one was Jupiter, so I look into the sky and find the planet. One shot, I have to run back down into the boiler room where I found the Jupiter symbol and grab the planet's essence that is floating above the stairs. If not grabbed in time, the, you'll have to wait till the next round to try again. I would definitely recommend the water variant of the Kraken for this step. Repeat this for seven other planets and the step will be complete. A quick side note is that the moon is in place for the Earth, Neptune will be off in the sea doing its own thing, and the step will be completed once you reach the sun as it is always the last planet. And make sure you grab the essence, you have around 30 seconds to grab it or you'll fail the step. Once you shoot the sun, the final essence will be revealed. Interacting with it will lead to the next step of the easter egg. Step 7, where light shines, not the path, leads it inward. This is definitely the most stressful step of the easter egg. This step requires the player to get from one side of the ship to the other while destroying icebergs that block your path. Any gun will do damage to these icebergs, but I recommend using the Kraken. It does take a total of 10 hits though. It'll not only hit the iceberg, but the icy after effect will also slow down any surrounding zombies. After the fifth iceberg, you'll be given a max ammo. You'll slowly be chased by a snowstorm, and if it catches up to you, you'll have to restart the step. After you destroy the final iceberg at the end of the poop deck, a portal will open, leading to the boss fight. Step 8. Unto the nest, its malice unravels. Once you and your team are ready, interact with a circle, but keep in mind that once you do, you will not be able to return to the map. And once you do, you'll be teleported into the iceberg. You'll have infinite air in here, but the objective is to place the sentinel artifact into the tree of life. Once you do, you'll be blasted back, and the boss fight will commence. Something from myth or, or legend. What was it? Step 9. Behold the Eye of Malice and Despair. Finally, we are at the boss fight. This boss fight has 5 different phases. I would recommend the Rocket Launcher, the Humunculus, and the Water Variant of the Kraken. The Eye of Odin will not attack you during phases 1 and 2, and you'll simply need to kill Zombies, Elementals, Stokers, and Blightfathers. The first phase will have you fighting at the back of the poop deck, just like the Poison Challenge. A max ammo and Carpenter are kept close by for the players to grab whenever their ammo and shield are low. Once completed, the players will be teleported to Phase 2 in the Engine Room. In Phase 2, the only difference from Phase 1 is the close quarter space and the ice storms that the eye shoots up, which buff zombies similar to the water zombies effect. The ice storm will do no damage to the player. After enough zombies have been killed, the players will be teleported to Phase 3 inside of the state rooms. In Phase 3, the eye will begin to attack the player using an ice beam to fire down the two corridors. The eye also has a tendency to switch corridors. This is the first phase where the homunculus is very helpful. There are a total of three sub-phases for the eye before the phase is completed. In phase four, you'll be thrown onto the Promain starboard deck. This phase is slightly harder than the phase three because the zombies have a much easier chance of hitting you from all sides and can lead some very quick downs. There are also three very quick sub-phases in this phase of the fight. The ice storms also return from phase two. After phase 4, the final phase will commence back on the poop deck. In the final phase, the eye will now grow in size and become much more sporadic. There are a total of 3 subphases in each phase. A good way to tell if you'll be done with a subphase is when the eye begins to use its newest attack, the screen nuke. Once enough damage has been done to it, it will let out a scream. 
When this happens, throw a homunculus and begin shooting at the eye. If enough damage is done, the eye will stop and the subphase will be done. But if it isn't stopped, it'll screen nuke the area, downing everybody. After repeating this process three times, the Eye of Odin will be destroyed and the Easter Egg ending will play. I'll leave the ending here for you to watch. Thank you for watching, and remember, keep on slaying. The Eye's doing something weird! Shoot it! It all just went back to how it was before. No one will ever know. That apparition. I've seen it before. I know where it is. Is it somewhere you've been? Uh, no. Only in books. But I do know its location. Uh, Greece. Delphi, to be specific. Then that's where we're going next. The bad guys are there. There's a good chance my father is too.